Hello, everybody. You're very welcome at the eighth edition of the Nijmegen in Science Film Festival, where science meets film. Very happy to see you all here. You've chosen a very special program to be a part of tonight. As tonight, the subject is going to be robots and their functions. And we're going to talk about this with you through a robot opera named Career Advice for Robots. And after that, we will show you the film Sophia, directed by Jan Kosbe and Crystal Moselle. Uh, the film Sophia is about uh, scientist David Hansen, who has been working for many years on his lifelike robot named Sophia. And uh, if through the, in the film, we will see how this raises all kinds of metaphysical questions. What makes a human? What makes a robot? Does a robot like Sophia deserve you know, human rights? How would, what would that entail? Um, but before we show you the film, we'll show you a wonderful robot opera, which I'll now tell you a little extra about. So um, the TU Delft, Technical University Delft, has made something very wonderful. And uh, a scientist, David Ubbink, who is in the room with us now, uh, there he is, uh, and um, Joost van der Loo, who is the producer, he's sitting in the front row, uh, have uh, created this so-called opera performance. They've done this together with many scientists, 11 of whom are also in the front row, so <laughs> you're very welcome. Um, the vision of the TU Delft is to, uh, it was a collaboration with the TU Delft vision team, and their vision is that the only real way to develop robots, or the only way to develop a robot in such a way that it means something, is by doing it in cooperation with the very people who are going to make use of these robots, be they factory workers, you know, people who need palliative care, anything like that. This will be shown in opera form. What that entails will be explained by Joost after my talk. Uh, also, the scientists that are in the room right now will be going for a beer after the show in the bar Toontje Lager, which is best uh, translated as pipe down, I think. So, uh, should you be interested and want to ask questions, feel free to go to Toontje Lager and bother them and drink some alcohol yourself. A group of performers of the robot opera should be getting ready behind me, or so I was told. There they are. And I will now name them. <laughs> so please give them a warm welcome. That's Merlijn Runia, Jan Willem Baljet, Thomas Boer, Antje Lose, and Isabel Schroeder. Oh no, Isabel Schroeder couldn't be with us tonight. She is at another opera, busy, busy. Uh, she was responsible for the direction. Um, the, uh, the important thing is to know that after you have seen this wonderful performance, uh, the room will be quickly rebuilt for the film showing, so please don't feel like you've missed the film. It will ju just stay seated and it will happen. <laughs> um, yes, uh, and the uh, only thing left to say is that this is a wonderful opportunity for us at InScience. We're very happy to see this performed here live. Uh, we're very excited. And uh, I hope you all are too, and have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and please enjoy the rest of the festival. <laughs> and now, Joost van der Loo. Thank you for this wonderful introduction. Just a quick word um, about the numbers involved. Um, on stage uh, soon, you'll see David Ebbing, and he'll be by himself, but he'll be representing the hundreds of ro robot scientists and social scientists who are working uh, with us and um, who have also helped to produce this uh, show, this performance. And then uh, behind me, there are four people of the uh, Working People Choir, but they represent the hundreds of millions of people who will be working with robots in the future or are working already with robots. So as the performance happens, um, these five people will channel all the desires and fears and needs of all these people. Uh, and they will direct it to you, the audience. And uh, without further ado, um, let's enjoy career advice for robots. So
So if you learn one thing, it's uh, that uh, so I'm a professor uh, at Delft University of Technology, but the real people who know something about technology is <laughs> rarely the professors. Um, anyways, my name is David Abink. Um, uh, I'm a professor in human-robot interaction, and I was one of the scientists involved in uh, in this project. And um, you could say that that one of the things that I try to understand is uh, how to make sure that humans understand what robots can do and cannot do and will do and will not do, um, so that you can work with them a bit, and hopefully also the other way around, that robots understand a bit of what humans can and cannot do and want to do and won't do. And uh, so this is a fascinating field. Um, and uh, typically, when I go to the movies, uh, it doesn't deal with the kind of questions that, that uh, we typically research. Eh? So this is a, a still of the movie that you will see, and um, li like you just said, uh, you can ask all sorts of interesting questions when you see a robot like this with a kind of a human face. And it can make facial expressions and it can you know, generate voice. That's yeah, not, not, not really by the robot itself, uh, as, you, as you will uh, learn. But then uh, you get all sorts of questions. Can you, you know, can you fall in love with a robot like that? Can you build a relationship? Uh, should they have rights? Should they be allowed to be a citizen? Uh, which uh, in this case this robot became. Uh, what does it even mean? Um, is that fake? Is that real? Et cetera, et cetera. So these are the kind of questions that often you see in science fiction as well. And they're fascinating because they say something about us. But uh, the kind of robots that we are actually dealing with right now, so not science fiction, there are different kind of robots. Uh, for example, a robot like this. Uh, it doesn't look so fancy. Uh, do you have any idea what kind of robot this might be? This, ladies and gentlemen, is an asparagus picking robot. Yeah? Did you know that? I didn't know they were there, uh, but, uh, but so we found out. And so this, these kind of robots, they're being used, for example, on the work floor all around us. And sometimes you know, it's good and sometimes it's maybe not so good. And it's actually quite hard to predict the impact of these kind of robotics on the work floor. Quite often in the media you will hear, oh, we have all sorts of labor shortages, maybe robotics is the solution. Yeah? And so uh, it's unfortunately not that easy that you can easily create robots, even if, uh, apart from the question if we should. Anyways, the whole point of this, uh, this event today is to give you some of the insights that we as scientists uh, got when we started to go to the work floor and uh, listen to the people who are working with these kinds of technologies and who might work with new kinds of robotic technologies that we're developing right now. So you could say uh, one of uh, the things I will try to do, uh, uh, channeling all my colleagues here, is to open up my ears and listen to the working people choir. Um, and so uh, these kind of robots, you could say, they don't always align well with what humans uh, would want. And uh, I'm curious if, uh, if we might have your opinion on that, if you recognize that. So um, I will sit here and uh, I will start to listen. Of we and when I'm gone, not this. 
Okay, I think I heard that loud and clear. Um, and so what I heard when I was listening to this was that uh, there's this, um, this kind of request, so this need for precision, for quality, for performance. And you know, that comes from humans, it doesn't come from robots necessarily. Yeah? And um, for example, when we went to, the, to this guy, he's called Nigel, he's an expert in manufacturing and he's really, really, really good at that. And his need for precision and his sense of quality is not always met by the robot. And so it's not as simple that when he works with robots that, um, you know, that he can leave that robot alone and that he could do something else. Actually, he needs to work very tightly with this kind of robot. Uh, and only then can he reach this sense of, of quality. And so one of the ways that robotics researchers are trying to improve robotics is to make them better and better and more precise, uh, to which humans then often need to adapt. Right? As you saw, uh, you need to adapt in this, uh, in, the, in this walking. And that means that um, one way forward is that, that you say, well, we don't want this, this humans anymore. We need to make these robots more autonomous. So that's something you typically hear about in newspapers, more autonomy for the robots. And then you get these kind of robots where maybe there's no, uh, no human. The downside is that robots don't always work very well all the time. In, in our field, we call this brittleness, so that it can break just like that, like glass. It's hard to predict when a robot doesn't work. Sometimes it just fails. And then you need to quickly go back in and save the day as a human. And so uh, I was wondering, you know, if perhaps you recognize some of that. Yeah, maybe there's even a song about it. It's a very a season bound. I do seem so Oh, 
what you are, a piece of work. Okay, okay, so uh, here we have our beautiful asparagus uh, picking robot. Uh, but when we came to visit that, uh, this is what we found. Yeah, uh, it wasn't working. A prime example of this automation brittleness. Um, and uh, you could say that uh, right now, you know, these people are needed to, to actually fix this machine. And it interrupts the work process. Um, and these guys are now working really hard to make sure this robot can work. Yeah. Um, and so part of it, you might say, well, you know, we just need to make better robots so that they can work more autonomously and that's, let's solve this problem of brittleness and then we're done. Yeah, but then uh, actually you might think that what you are then left with is something that uh, also makes work perhaps a bit boring and yeah, that maybe all you need to do is press a button uh, on or off or something like that. Yeah, so, so maybe, you know, that's also not the right solution. I, I actually don't know. So yeah, I, I have to ask some people for help. Uh, perhaps uh, some advice? Just buttons. Buttons. I push his buttons. The machine does what it does. It has only buttons. This is not enough. I want to program it. Teach it a skill. How it does not understand a bit, then how can it work? And at my will. Just buttons. Just buttons. Okay, so then it's still not good enough. Um, this is an example where we went to uh, robotic welders. So this is a robot welder. And so my initial assumption was if we would go into the field for these kind of systems, you would think, well, then maybe, you know, you don't need these very experienced welders anymore. Maybe you just need people who, you know, push the button and then the welding machine does a thing and then maybe you need to fix it, just like with the asparagus picking. But in this case, the, the person we spoke to, uh, he's called Helder, the welder, <laughs> living in Den Helder. <laughs> well, I'm going to stop right now. But, um, but so he is an extremely good welder. So he's so good that, that he can hear by the sound of the welding, he can hear if it's, if it's going well, yes or no. And that he uses to actually manage these machines and, and, and check in. Yeah, but so you need that expertise to operate these machines well, but it's not so exciting. Yeah, so, so that means he would like to do something else with these, uh, with these robots. He would like to perhaps program them or you know, somehow work with them uh, in, a, in, a, in a more collaborative way. Yeah, so, so that just goes to show that if you listen you know, to the people who work with that, you realize that the complexity of introducing robots to the workplace is not just a robotic problem. And we're not gonna get there if we just, uh, from a technological point of view, uh, come up with great solutions. We need to you know, really listen uh, to the people who will use it. Um, and so that's what we try to do uh, uh, with, uh, with this team. And so 
Uh, in this Career Advice for Robots, it's a podcast in Dutch. Um, we try to gather all the all the things we learned as scientists around this particular theme. Uh, and that was an initiative of TU Delft, um, where you know we also develop, developed other things. For example, very beautiful anthropological documentary, uh, which we'll show in the bar Toontje Lager if you uh, if you uh, intend to come there and have a beer with us. Um, and a nice booklet with uh, with cartoons, and so you can you know go to this website, download it, and see what we uh, what we learned. Now. We also used all that knowledge that that we that we got from listening to uh, to workers to to then incorporate it again into a research. And so this is an example where we went to KLM, uh, where people uh, need to uh, clean fan blades and then maybe repair them, inspect them and repair them. And there we actually tried to develop that with and for these people rather than uh, going there in once and then you know thinking, okay, this is the problem and then here's the solution. Um, but to actually co-develop co that kind of uh, uh, robotics. Um, and so, yeah, I can talk about this, of course, for a long time, but the actual, you know, the real proof of the pudding is um, that, yeah, I'm a little bit touched by it, but we, we brought one of the true gems of our robotics here, live, for you tonight, and it will come on stage fully autonomously. Um, so, um, well, you, you know, it, it worked great <coughs> during the sound check. Uh, well, it's quite the model. Um, perhaps there's room for improvement. Okay. Um, so perhaps you know I should stop talking and um, and and start to to listen if you have any career advice for this uh, robot, <clears throat> and then I'll sit down and and try to listen to it because of course this robot cannot listen. It's the scientists who develop this technology that that need to listen. So you know <clears throat> I'll try to uh, incorporate it straight away. Um, okay, I'm ready. <coughs> you too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Also, Joost van der Loo. Marijn Kampuis. Bart. Uh, uh, the robot. Uh, and all the people from Vision Team Robotics that helped us uh, along. Uh, and so if you uh, want to join us, uh, this is where we'll have our drinks. Um, after the movie, yeah, well, we'll have them perhaps already a little bit before. But uh, be welcome, and thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye. <laughs>